Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is December 13th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see we're getting a little bit of a break here across the region. Precipitation still into western BC, but Washington getting that much needed break. We've got some fog forming with all that precipitation, that moisture that's fallen across the region. It is quite moist. You can see that bouncing around. That's not going to last long though, because we have a system moving through tomorrow, and then another very potent atmospheric river as we go through the day on Monday with additional systems, winds storm potential rolling back across the region. Lots to talk about, so let's jump into things. This is Medford National Weather Service, and again, some of these storms are going to be taking a little bit more aim at portions of Oregon as well, and you can see the fluctuating snow levels as we go through this upcoming week. Now, Seattle-Tacoma, this yellow across western Washington, that is because of a pretty high landslide threat risk. And we're going to be really adding to that as we bring that next atmospheric river into the region. And we got flood warnings. That's going to be ongoing here as we go through the early portion of next week as well. People trying to dry out and get back home. You know, a lot of people are blocked off. You had a lot of people evacuating. And so we're just going to be going towards major flood stage for some rivers yet again. Not what we need, not what we want to hear. But taking a look here, atmospheric river hit portions of western Montana and Idaho panhandle very hard as well. I saw some roads washing out and there's mudslide concerns. And again, the high snow levels are really going to bring some big impacts again with this one. The silver lining is we do start to bring some colder air back into the region here as we go through the mid portion of this upcoming week. Spokane on the windstorms are always on top of things here and they are calling attention to the potential for some very windy conditions. I'll show you the latest on the models on that. You don't want to miss this. Now, taking a look at the Tempest Weather Station, you want to record the wind speed at your house, you want a great Christmas gift, this is the one to get. Imagine opening this on Christmas morning, having it set up in five minutes and watching the fun there on your smartphone. App stores all the data for you in the cloud. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. Now, taking a look here, what we just went through and then what we're going through, and you might say, oh, that's not as bad, it's not a big deal. No, we're getting up towards the major flood stage again. That's gonna be flooding some areas and bringing more water again back down into areas where people are trying to get back to their homes or trying to dry out, they're trying to clean up. This is the last thing we need. So there's Tuesday at 10 p.m. and this could go up or down. These forecasts are by no means an exact science and they change quite a bit. Here is Snoqualmie River near Carnation also getting back up to major flood stage by the time you get towards Wednesday night and you look at Snoqualmie River here. I was there for that, that 70,000 flow coming over the falls. I think it was like the fifth or sixth highest ever. And again, we're going to be bumping this up and this could definitely go much higher with all the rainfall incoming. Now, also, I should mention the Green River and other rivers across Western Washington are going to get very high again as we go through this week. So looking at the year... A PN model. And I should lay the disclaimer that it's not going to be as bad as the last round, but of course things are very saturated here. So I just want to make people aware of that. Now taking a look at the European model. So we're getting a little bit of a break here, except for Western BC as we go through the day today and tonight starts to creep down towards Vancouver Island, some snow piling up for portions of British Columbia. They're glad to see that. And then as we go on in towards uh, tomorrow, we see the next frontal system arrive. Not too crazy there for Western Washington, at least not initially as we go through the day Sunday. But then the precipitation and the very warm air starts to arrive with this next atmospheric river. And you can see the Cascades. There's not many areas getting snowfall with this next atmospheric river. Snow levels are going to be very high. And again, a lot of precipitation rolling in with that system. Then we go to Tuesday and you see a the silver lining here is that snow level starts to drop back down as we go on in through the day on Tuesday. But as well as keeping some of that precipitation going for some of the foothill areas and a lot of the lower elevations as we go through this upcoming week. But we do cool down quite a bit here by the time we go towards Wednesday aloft. So we have the chance to at least start to add to some of the snowpack across the higher terrain. Now, if we take a look at the European, there's where we are now. This is where we're expected to be here on Thursday night. So you can kind of see that very warm air up and across the region here. And it's going to kind of remain with us in some form as we go through the day on Monday. Then finally, we start to bring some of this cooler air down as we go on in through, you know, what is that time frame? Tuesday, Wednesday, and we start to try to start to build that snowpack up again here. So 
that's the silver lining here. I know people want to get that snow up on the higher terrain. The ski resorts want to open. People want to go skiing. It's going to be a while still, but at least it's a start. Now, Crater Lake, you can see as well, across some southern Oregon, you can see how the snow levels are going to be fluctuating here as we go through this upcoming week, but definitely much better than what we've been dealing with. Now, looking at the models here, this is the European on the left versus the GFS on the right model comparison. Um, if we take a look here, uh, we're got, we have this system rolling through on Monday. And you see the pressure gradient start to uh, tighten here across western Washington, especially in western BC as we go through the day on Monday. That's going to bring some strong winds. And of course, with things saturated, you'll worry about trees falling and whatnot. And you can see a pretty potent pressure gradient here across the region. But then we have what is a very interesting and potentially stronger storm arriving as we go through the day on Tuesday, Tuesday night, and on in through the day on Wednesday. Look at this monster here, 978, 980 millibars with an absolutely ridiculous pressure gradient on the south side. We've really got to watch this one. This could hit western Washington, southwest BC, eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, Idaho Panhandle, western Montana. Big time storm arriving here. Really good model agreement as we go through the day Tuesday and on in through Wednesday. Look at that thing race across the Rocky Mountains. Just in a very intense pressure gradient. I might have to go out and chase this one somewhere because that is just an absolutely wild looking storm right in through the region here. And a good, again, pretty good model agreement on that one's arrival. And then you can see additional potentially windy systems as we continue on in through the week. Now, I brought this all the way out towards hour 126. This is Thursday morning. Look at some of these winds the GFS has across eastern Oregon and eastern Washington. Just huge gusts and big gusts across western Washington as well. Once you start getting 50 plus in saturated soils, bad things start to happen with the trees. Coastal areas getting very windy as well in the higher terrain of the Cascades. My goodness, look at some of this wind speed just showing up. Crazy stuff. So we're going to try to home in on these details a little bit more tomorrow. I'm going to get some model consistency today, and we'll try to get the high-resolution models back into range <clears throat> as we go uh, you know, on through tomorrow, and we'll start to try to nail down the details on this storm. Day one, excessive rainfall outlook. As you know, we're getting a bit of a break here today, but by day two, we start to bring the marginal risk back, and then we bring the slight risk back. This is for Monday on in through Tuesday morning, and this is the wording from the excessive rainfall outlook well-defined atmospheric river, and of course the renewed flooding, the potential for landslides or mudslides. I'll show you why we call this atmospheric river, or at least most people do here in a moment as well. It's kind of a nickname for the atmospheric river. There's day four and day five, still some marginal risk out there. And of course, we'll be watching the landslide potential as we go through the next few days. This is no doubt going to ramp back up again for portions of the Puget Sound, Western Washington. So yeah, no rest for the weary, right? Now, taking a look at the national blend of models. So I'm going to put this into motion. This is tw the 12Z data versus the 03Z added. Just try trying to look at some model to model run consistency. And we scroll off in towards uh, the upcoming week here. And I'll look by the time we get towards Monday afternoon. There's Monday night. There's Tuesday morning. Precipitation just continuing. Hopefully by this time as we get through Tuesday and Wednesday, that starts to show up as snowfall for the higher terrain. So that could be some very good amounts. But you see Seattle approaching two inches by the time you go towards Wednesday night. Big rain shadowing going on here east of the mountains also. But if we scroll off in through the next 10 days or so, I mean, look at the precipitation amounts for some of the region here. Again, just an absolute deluge coming here after what we've got. <clears throat> Again, landslide concerns, flooding concerns, lots of watch here over the next few days, the next couple of weeks. So month to date, two meter temperature anomaly. I mean, look at this, just absolutely bathing in this warm air so far in the month of December. Hopefully we can flip this switch and change this up as we go through the later portion of December and January. And this is the lower 48. Look at the West, just absolutely roasting versus the East, the big cutoff there right across some of the plains much colder than normal it's been across the east coast and you might wonder what in the heck fire is this across california that is the tule fog that is an inversion trapped in the lower elevations there just we cannot scrub it out there's been no wind here so far for the month of december so if you're wondering what that was there it is now looking at snow depth so as we scroll through you can see our snowpack still being eaten away at with this next atmospheric river it just looks miserable out there stevens pass <clears throat> i've seen some pictures snoqualmie pass not looking great but however, as we go on into this upcoming week, we do have the potential. It even wants to show a little bit of foothill, higher elevation snowfall creeping in at times. We'll see how that goes. We'll pay more attention to that in a bit. But we do start to rebuild the snowpack a bit as we go towards December 18th or so. Now, 
you don't need to be a meteorologist to, to nickname this thing anything you want, but you can clearly see where this moisture plume is coming from. This is uh, Monday right here. Uh, I think that is about what, Monday morning. Yeah, look at that plume all the way from the Hawaiian Islands. You can smell the pineapples as it transfers across the atmospheric river back into the Pacific Northwest. So the last one kind of came from the Western Pacific. That's why I nicknamed it the Mango Express. Now, taking a look here at uh, artificial intelligence, 5,000 feet. You can see the warm air. We've just been bathed in here in the Pacific Northwest. And we're going to continue that here as we go towards Tuesday. But then we get a little bit of sign of hope here as we start to move some of this cooler air aloft back into the region. We're not seeing a sign for any kind of Arctic air just yet, but it definitely a cooler pattern than what we've been going through. I mean, pretty much anything would be just absolutely extremely warm conditions here across the region. But yeah, we're going to be cooling things down here as we go through the second half of December, it looks like. And just look Looking off into the way off into the fantasy land, the tea leaves. If we go on in towards January, you continue to see some below normal temperatures all the way from South Alaska down across the Pacific Northwest. We'll continue to watch to see if that verifies. There's the six to 10 day temperature outlook. There's the precipitation outlook. This should make sense. There's the eight to 14 day. Uh, cooler air trying to creep in here as we go through the Christmas time period. Glad to see it. And the eight to 14 day, much above normal here for the West. And risky heavy precipitation in the Experimental Climate Prediction Center products. You can see the entirety of the West Coast as we go to December 20th through the 26th. Storm train is going to be rocking and rolling. There's a risk of heavy snow across the Cascades, Intermountain West as well. And risk of high winds will be with us. So check out the Patreon page. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Um, click like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next forecast.